show, Five Star Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Michael. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly, and LA United, they just took a drubbing from New York Red Bulls. It was, uh, yeah, not a banner na- night, it wasn't a banner day, it was just, uh, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> the Unified team did a lot better than we did, I'll tell you that, and uh, it was fantastic for them, really not good for the first team, but uh, yeah, you know. 4-0, it, it didn't really feel really like a full 4-0. Uh, it just got worse and worse kind of as the night went on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, because, you know, early on we looked decent in our play in terms of being able to keep possession. And that's just the, you know, that's how they lull you into the false sense of confidence. And we definitely did that. 1-0, though, in the 32nd minute. Uh, yeah. It's just what they do, you know. They uh, they find those uh, those mistakes, and those mistakes there were. And uh, yeah, there was uh, a throw in that Andrew Gutman yeah fell asleep a little bit on. And yep, uh, another another time the same same yeah. you know new uh, new day same story kind of thing, right? It is. Um, another inflicted goal based on a dead ball situation and another situation based on a issue that Andrew Gutman had. Yeah. I mean, it keeps happening. Um, <laughs> I, I love his offensive production and his midfield, you know, him running up and down like crazy. It's great. But I mean, they know it's, it's the, it's the place to attack us and to find some joy and they keep doing it. And the tape is out there and boy, are they running it back over and over again on us? Right. Because, uh, yeah, they're running riot on that, uh, you know, most teams in the league. Because, yeah, either there's space in behind or there's, you know, moments of madness. But, uh, yeah, you know, and uh, we'd go super in-depth into all of this, but we also went super in-depth in the live stream post-match. So uh, definitely check that out for uh, more of that. But in terms of... Uh, you know, the rest of this match for us in this episode, uh, yeah, you know, 45th minutes, they doubled their lead, uh, just more disorganization and, uh, we didn't clear the ball from our half and yeah, they, uh, yeah, they just were able to take advantage, uh, of us turning it over and then, uh, creating a fast break and, uh, yeah, Christian Caceres Jr. He, uh, he kind of terrorized us a little bit in this match. And, uh, yeah, scored it past uh, Guzan, who I think should have done a little bit better here. But I think that's probably the the story of the season for most of our goalkeepers, unfortunately. Yeah, we, uh, we, right now, it's really bad in terms of, uh, we we are the highest conceding side, uh, tied for anyway. So, uh... You know, it's just, we're only surpassing that by just the number of goals that we score uh, sans this past match, which, uh, yeah, New York Red Bulls just always have our number. We, of course, beat them earlier this season, but just, yeah, the Red Bull Arena is just a house of horrors. We fail to get it done pretty much every time. But, uh, yeah, and so in uh, in that uh uh, second half, uh, they added two more goals. Frankie Amaya, a deflection, and then there was another deflection uh, for the fourth goal. That, uh, yeah, I mean, those, I wouldn't really say it's maybe as bad on Brad Guzan, but, uh, you know, definitely the uh, the first goal, beating, uh, getting beat at the near post is just, yeah, especially when it's really not... Uh, I don't think really that hard hit of a shot, but um, but it is you know the reaction time when you're a little bit older. I mean, it happens. But uh, in terms of yeah, I mean anything good that came out of this match. I mean, was there anything that uh, you saw? No one got particularly injured, yeah. so that was good. There we um, go. Kind of like sh- moving on to the next game with a full complement. Mm-hmm. Um, Aside from international duty stuff, um, what what I want to say though, like kind of to just kind of put that game to bed, mm-hmm. 
is the fact that what, what this leaves me with is this feeling that I, I have a really hard time predicting Atlanta United's outcomes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like one game they'll just like, okay, they'll like, all right, we're looking real good. The next game after that, it's like, what is this team? Like just completely falling apart. Uh, it's so just all over the place. I, I mean, and it's not just me. A lot of the guys in Discord too are like, like I, it's 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 almost futile to try and be like, yeah, I think this is what the uh, the end result is going to be because it's almost never like that. I I can't believe it's still able to surprise everyone every game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty much that. It's uh, it's not inspiring confidence, and that's that's the issue. Is uh, I mean, yeah. One game we look like world beaters, and then the next game, sometimes the very next game, we will look like the most dire team in the league. And uh, I mean, I've I've followed teams that have been like this in the past. It's it's tough. Yeah, you uh, you pretty much it's feast or famine, and it's not the most fun uh, for neutrals. It's very fun because, yeah, it's entertainment value is there for LA United I fans. You're gonna get <laughs> right, exactly. For LA United fans, it is a little too much of a. Uh, yeah, we need like we need to up our hospital bills, up our insurance uh, premiums because it's just yeah, it requires a lot of stress uh, resolving to uh, to follow this team right now. And it's just, uh, yeah, I think I'd prefer, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I, I mentioned this uh, during the, the live stream. We are pretty much embodying what Darren Eels talked about as the type of team that he wanted to build, which is, you know, teams that win 4-3 and all that type of stuff. But, yeah, like, uh, you know, the, I think the key point there is that win teams that win 4-3 <laughs> we we're losing 4-0 on uh some really dire looking you know attacks sometimes so it's uh it's what this match was uh yes we were without miles robinson Derek etienne jay fortune i think jay fortune was a miss in this midfield uh yeah he uh when he's been in He's allowed some dynamism that we've uh, not allowed, but he's provided some dynamism that we've needed in midfield. And uh, yeah, you know, basically Tiago Mata on an island. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much that way for a lot of uh, a lot of fans right now, and it's just. Uh, it's not the most inspiring uh, when he's in there, and yeah, there's a transfer rumor that's uh, of uh, maybe someone that you know, not the same position, but maybe could take uh, the place of of him. But yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy, yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get on that and uh, see if there's uh, yeah I know to, to, exactly right to just subsidize really but uh, but either way anyway uh, we'll wrap a bow on that match and yes our next match will be against the Philadelphia Union on Sunday and we will have that preview for you later on in this episode but that gets us into the news and the standings look like this uh, we are currently in sixth. Uh, just under Columbus and right above Orlando City. So at the very least, we have that. But uh, not for long if we can't keep some sort of semblance of good form. And uh, yes, we did, of course, lose our undefeated streak uh, with this past match. Uh, the one shining light in this uh, pretty dire form, I would say. Because we've won, I think, two out of our last 11 not good. Not good, Bob. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, currently where we are. But, uh, yeah, the uh, getting into some of the news uh, that's uh, good <laughs> is uh, Tiago Hamada and Yorgos Yakumakis. They have made or been named to the 2023 All-Star Game roster. And, uh, yeah, 
in terms of uh, some of the players that have also been named to it, uh, the commissioner picks named also uh, Chicago Fire's Kai Kamara and CF Montreal's Matthew Schwanier. Uh, and uh, some other notable players, uh, a former uh, Atlanta United player in John Gallagher, who, uh, yeah, you know, of course, we shipped off to Austin FC. He will be making that as well. Uh, as well as, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, someone that uh, I'm surprised didn't make this, actually, is Brandon Vasquez. And, uh, yeah, he's not in here. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a big snub. I mean, he's been very, very good. But uh, maybe, yeah, not at the prolific pace that he was last year for FC Cincy. But still, I mean, uh, yeah, he's getting Europe interest. It's interesting. Go on. There are, yeah, it's pretty much, that's what it is. I mean, it's strikers. It's, um, you know, Essentially, the attack is where a lot of teams spit money. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of other areas that uh, a lot of teams will skimp out on, like we do with our midfield. But, uh, yeah, so in terms of uh, the the All-Star jersey, that was also revealed. What are your thoughts on that, Michael? Uh, I thought it's okay. It's not great. It's not bad. I mean, I think what was the last year? It was the... Um... That's just like all black, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and this is like all black, and then it has this kind of like starburst kind of shape, um, kind of shooting out um, with like, what is it, red kind of coming out a bit? Red accents. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, it's better. Like, it's a little bit like uh, eye popping, but I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, it's not a jersey I'm going to get. It's not interesting to me, really. Um, I think we had some better ones in the past. I think. The one uh, that Miguel Amaron played on, I think that was like 2017 or something. Um, that one was pretty neat. Yeah, the um, blue one. Yeah, with the yeah, yeah. stars. Yeah, the one for Atlanta uh, when we had the All Star game. You know, of course, it was all white with a little bit of a kind of um, some touches of yeah, kind of like a little bit uh, Chiefs, a little bit you know Atlanta Braves ish kind of accents. Yeah, ours was yeah like cream and it was okay, like uh, yeah, it was it, it could have been better. I mean, it's these like, it's like Rob Lowe wearing the uh, NFL hat. It's pretty much like, yeah, you know, uh, there's not really a point to getting these, but I can I, I can get it. Yeah, like, I I mean, is is Arsenal gonna look better than us on the field? Yes, that's just what it comes down to. It depends. So, at least you at least you'd <laughs> want to look better than the other team, but I guess right. not. I mean, it'll depend because uh, our away kits this season, whoo, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, and so I don't know if the, the team is going to, like, in terms of Arsenal, are going to reveal those during the All-Star game. It might behoove them to do that. Um, but uh, I would say they should probably stick with the primary ones uh, for this match. I would, yeah. It would probably look a lot better, but uh, because yeah, if it's like two eyesores, <laughs> it would just render the game unwatchable. But yeah, I mean, if you if you're trying to like sell, you know, the you know, the the EPL trying to sell their brand overseas, yeah, then you know you'd want to wear your, mm -hmm. you know, um, your your brand, Best. which is the uniform, the kit that you're known around the world for. So. Yeah. Of course, it would make sense for me, at least, for them yeah. to play with it on. So, yeah. it would be weird for me if they played away. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, if and that's the thing. It's like I think it will be a good kind of difference. Uh, it won't be clashing. So, yeah. The uh, I think the red with the the white uh, shoulders sleeves uh, will probably look the best against uh, you know this uh, <laughs> this stuff. But speaking of as well. Uh, there will be a new training top for July 4th, and it's the Captain America uh, Marvel and Adidas collaboration. You already covered your face, a little face palm. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that one, man. We need, we need to get Adidas. We need. To, I know we just signed a contract with Adidas, but I'd be I'd be happy if when we go with like Nike or someone else, yeah. like like Hummel or something. I just, man, dude, some of these. I mean the what. I mean, the jerseys with, like, the shoulder stripes on, like, uh, two years ago or something. I just, I don't know. There's just been so many. I'm just not into it. 
kind of jerseys yeah. that I'm like, okay, we're just moving on, trying something new. And it just keeps, and this is just another example of it just being another miss for me. So it's like, keep them coming, I guess. I don't know. People love it. I don't, not me though. Yeah. Cause yeah, there, there was the one uh, of yesteryear that was kind of like the New England Revolution kit or logo rather. And that one was hideous. This one, this squiggly line shit is ugly. Uh, it, it is it is quite bad, but uh, <laughs> it is every team's gonna be pretty much wearing it. Uh, I, it's also this Adidas is not gonna go anywhere. Uh, they just uh, you know they have Messi, you know, pretty much uh, signing a, a sweetheart deal with uh, all that with the league and all that. Uh, it's gonna be a while, and Nike. Nike can be hit or miss too, so I mean, yeah, I think the best thing probably would be that uh, just allow each team to, you know, kind of figure out their own sponsor, but, you know, it can be pretty bad too, because sometimes you will get the, uh, you know, Kappa jerseys, or the, <laughs> and those, those are usually, I mean, while bold, usually pretty hideous too, so. Either way, uh, we'll move on swiftly from that. And uh, yes, LA United, uh, the uh, League's Cup, they announced uh, that the group stage match against Cruz Azul uh, will be changed to Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, it was originally scheduled to be 8 p.m. But uh, so, yeah, that allows, uh, I don't know, to for people to party after the match a little bit earlier, I suppose. Cool. Awesome. Uh, but... Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, that that would have been a little bit more rough on a Saturday. But uh, but on to the transfer rumor of the week. Uh, and wow, yes, we finally have a transfer rumor. It's insane. It's been really quiet. But yeah, uh, we have the first one, and it's uh, from French journalist Loic Tanzi, who uh, reports that LA United... They're competing with two German clubs for 26-year-old midfielder, uh, defensive midfielder Tristan Muyumba from EA Gwingamp. And uh, I'm butchering all this, by the way, and you can roast me in the comments. But uh, but according to Tansi, yeah. Uh, Gangam is how I think you pronounce it. Yeah. I don't okay. know. That's my guess. There you that's go. what the phonetics say. Yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, and... Yeah, it could be that we're the landing spot. Uh, and, I mean, you know, he's a player that's, uh, at least according to transfer markets, uh, estimated transfer value at $1 million. Uh, Yeah, and, yeah, in terms of his career, it's been pretty start-stop. He's been at quite a few uh, clubs, but... Uh, yeah, last season he played 35 of the 38 games with 30 starts for Gwingamp. Or, how did you say it? Gangam. Gangam. Uh, and, uh, yeah, in terms of those uh, those matches, uh, yeah, I mean, Michael's got some stats that we can kind of go through and we can assess to see if maybe he will be worth it. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it'll be interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, so this guy's born in Paris, France. So he's going to occupy an international roster spot. Um, and boy, does he come in a small package. This guy's five foot four inches or 1.65 meters. Um, <laughs> he's not going to be helping us on any uh, set pieces or anything like that, probably. But uh, he does have some strengths that lie elsewhere. Like we said, he's a defensive midfielder. He f uh, plays with his right foot primarily. And uh, like... Uh, so he played with in the French second division division and their team that he played on came in sixth this year. Uh, it's funny because we're also in sixth this year right now. Um, and one thing I thought was a little interesting, but then I looked a little bit closer into it and it's a little less interesting, is that he played a whole six minutes for a Belgian first tier or first division team, uh, Cirque Brugge or Bruges, however you pronounce that, on on loan from 2017 to 2018. So he got six whole minutes on that team. That's his only first top flight team experience in his entire career, which is a little like a bit of a head scratcher for me when he's 26 and we're looking to sign this guy. Um, last year, like, yeah, he just said he played in 35 games 
Um, he had 41 interceptions, that's 1.39 per game, uh, and 47 tackles, that's 1.6 per game. Uh, and he had two assists and zero goals last season. Hmm. So overall, it doesn't sound like a home run signing. It doesn't sound like this guy is going to revolutionize anything or really um, set the league on notice. He's not that type of signing. I don't think he's supposed to be. I think you're looking at someone to replace, uh, and Henry Higuita did some good reporting on this. His speculation was maybe replacing like a U22 like Sosa or uh, another uh, player like Ibarra. Um, and so it's not going to be a DP. It's going to be kind of a guy that just kind of gets over the hump and hopefully he can be something a little bit more for us because that's how Atlanta United had that's how Atlanta United had dominated other teams in the past. They signed players, they had players who weren't DPs, but they were veterans. They had a lot of experience. They were smart and they could still turn people inside and out. So Hopefully this guy can do that. If you look, I don't know, um, I don't know if we can link it in the description or something like that, but he does have a highlight reel out. And if you watch a lot of his footwork, he has some he has some techers, he has some stuff he can do. Um, and it's not, to me, to the level of like a Darlington Nabby or something like that. Of course it wouldn't be, he's not at a DP level, but he is he looks relatively good and not only that the most important thing for me the most interesting thing that i noticed and at least the highlight is he looked like he was he had, he went after the game he pushed forward very progressive when he was looking to move the ball it wasn't lateral or backwards it wasn't taking his time it was a lot of one touches quick back and forth give and go that kind of thing and that kind of dynamism is something that's sorely missed in our defensive end, specifically in our midfield. So um, that's kind of my summary. Uh, I don't even, I mean, in all this, just to say, we don't even know if we're going to get him. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. So, you know, that's the summary. Um, and I'll leave it to you, AJ. Yeah. And, you know, so height isn't everything, of course. Uh, and he looks pretty pacey. Exactly, and uh, you know uh, he's, he's a French midfielder who uh, is undersized, and uh, you know there's a very famous one in terms of N'Golo Kante who just got a buku of money in Saudi Arabia, uh, and of course won everything in England. Uh, you know, so obviously he's not at that level, but of course uh, N'Golo Kante he uh, came from you know the very humble beginnings as well. So yeah, you never know. Uh, maybe this is a gem that is being uncovered. There's also, uh, I think, maybe some likenesses uh, in terms of another player in this league in Diego Chara, who, uh, you know, undersized, has been a stalwart for Portland Timbers. And so, uh, you know, if he, if he is even, a, you know, three-fourths of the player of Diego Chara, I'll take that. So, uh, you know, I think it might provide something different uh, into our midfield. But uh, you start to wonder, like, uh, you know, who's who's the odd man out? We pretty much have already three defensive midfielders on our roster right now in Franco Ibarra, Santiago Sosa, and Ozzy Alonso. So somebody is going to be, uh, you know, maybe leaving uh, at that point. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll find out. But, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you think uh, and if this will be a worth it signing for you. But uh, let's move on to the really disheartening stab you in the front news. Tata Martino is now the officially manager of Inter Miami. And, uh, yeah, of course, he won the MLS Cup with us in 2018 and has, of course, managed Newell's Old Boys, Paraguay, Barcelona, and Mexico. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just going to be so weird. And Argentina, of course. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be really weird. Yeah, seeing him on the other side, we're going to be playing him a lot. And, uh, yeah, Jose Martinez there as well. It's, uh, it's just Atlanta United 3. I mean, this is... Yeah, annoying, and Atlanta South, and yeah, Messi's going to join them as well, of course, and they are in the dredges. Uh, this season's probably a write-off for them, but uh, yeah, I imagine this offseason's going to be bananas. Uh, but 
Uh, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on Tata Martino joining Inter Miami? It's, I mean, I think everyone is going to feel a little sad seeing him uh, playing against us. I think, though, uh, the mature kind of fans will understand that we want to see him succeed. Don't ever want to see a previous uh, player and or uh, coach just not do well. Um, I just hope when he plays against us, he doesn't do well. Um, so that's the way I'll see it, like emotionally speaking, like the damage that's been done that way. Um, I think like in terms of what he can do for them, I mean, if he's got the same types of personnel that he had on Atlanta, which I'm not sure they do yet, even with Messi, um, then like I don't think that they have a Miguel Amaron style player um, that, that can just blow a game apart yet. Uh, so we'll see if they can find someone like that. And if they do, God help everybody. Because if Tata gets a hold of that and can reign control and then push it against other teams, it's it's going to be, and with Messi as the engine, it'll be even more devastating than 2018 Atlanta United. And that team ate the league alive. So, um, I, I mean... We're, I, that's why I keep saying, like, and everyone keeps looking, like, where's the transformers for Atlanta United? Because we're gonna have to get some firepower. We're gonna have to get, you know, something to 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 keep up and to fight back. Because if they get someone like that can just connect everything um, and make like make this team something similar to the 2018 Atlanta United that Tata apparently really really loves to to, to play like, um, we're in trouble. So we need something to answer that. Yeah. I mean, he's a uh, he's a guy uh, that can really, uh, you know, obviously, uh, what's the word? But he obviously knows how to win in this league, and he, proven, proven yeah, coach. Proven. And it's that uh, it's yeah, yeah. I would have preferred him to you know join a West Coast team, so we wouldn't have to see him as much. But uh, it is what it is. And uh, yep, Tata Martino now with Inter Miami. But, uh, yeah, so moving on to, uh, yeah, Miles Robinson. He is apparently available to play for the U.S. men's national team. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, full transparency, we are filming this on a Wednesday night. He didn't make the 11, but, uh, yeah, you know, either way, it's good that he is back to health. But, uh, yeah, on to the other bit of transfer news is that LA United announced that they transferred goalkeeper Vicente Reyes to Norwich FC, Norwich City FC, rather, uh, in the English Championship. And, uh, yeah, in terms of that, I mean, of course, uh, he and Justin Garces were kind of the, uh, the kind of duo that uh, were being touted from our academy. And, um yeah, he uh, he's been with us since the inaugural academy class, and yeah, the he was also part of the inaugural U13 team. Uh, yeah, signed a professional contract with the United Two in 2022, but uh, yeah, he has also made uh, yeah the Chile international uh, team at uh, the youth level, and so it's it's tough to uh to see you know a goalkeeper in which uh you know can make a championship squad when we're that dire in shot stopping right now and yep kind of annoying to see that but uh yeah you have any thoughts on reyes uh, is, know, uh being sold? yeah is norwich city um are they being promoted sometimes? Are they in, like, no. striking distance of kind of being promoted? Uh, I mean, basically, if they do well, I mean, they could obviously get promoted. But, yep, English Championship yeah. is where they lie right now. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was reading somewhere that they were, like, not a favorite, but, like, somewhere in the running to possibly... So, like, if he goes there, he could possibly be seeing himself in the Premier League in a couple years or something like that. So, yeah. um, that could be cool if that's a team that... I mean, because I remember... That was the team that uh, that Sergeant was on for a while from the United States, right? right? And they were, I remember, they were in the Premier League for a, for a hot minute. Yep. But yeah, um, I mean, hopefully they can make it back because, you know, you love to see our types of players um, doing well abroad because that you know builds our brand, right. makes people see us in a really nice light. So, um, and that's contagious. So we get more more players, sell off more players. So, right. um, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, it's it's a little like bittersweet that I think AJ was hinting at it earlier with like us getting rid of a I mean not getting rid of but like he wants his career to blossom and this is a perfect way to do that 
so you can't hold him back for that um, but it's like why didn't we use this guy earlier why didn't we have him when goose was struggling why didn't we have him when some of the other keepers were um, you know iffy um, like for instance Rocco's Rios Novos was the, our guy for a while I mean he, he wasn't doing very good so maybe this guy should have gotten a look I know he was much younger but still um, if he is this you know phenom going to England and he was for the Chilean national team I mean the senior team like that means he's pretty good so I mean it's like all the indications are pointing this, this we had a talent on our hands here and the, the fact that he never saw the first team when we had some guys who very much floundered it's a little bit of a head scratcher so yeah yeah and you know there's a lot of roster roster structure rules that uh, probably prevented it probably from being a you know, maybe the the first choice of doing that, but still, either way, yeah. You know, from Raul Gudino to Rocco Rios Novo to uh, Quentin Westberg, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. You know, we, we probably could have, uh, yeah, maybe given him a debut and just see what we had at this level, but not the case, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, so we'll move on. Uh, but uh, Elaine and I too. They scored four goals in the second half to come back from a 2-0 uh, deficit to win 4-2 against NYC FC 2 on Sunday night. And uh, Nick Firmino, he scored his ninth and 10th goal of the season already. And Jonathan Vilal, he scored his uh, first, or recorded his first two uh, assists of the year. And uh, Jackson Conway and Ada McFadden also scored to secure three points. Conway scored a penalty. Uh, but yes, really, really great stuff from the twos. Uh, pretty much the reverse uh, scoreline. Yep. We pretty much probably should. And uh, But they'll return to action on Friday, July 9th. So it'll be a little bit of time. Uh, but uh, Nick Firmino, he was also voted uh, the MLS Next Pro Player of the Match Day. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's well-deserved. It, he's a player that just uh, can't stop scoring, and hopefully he can start doing that for LA United because we need the goals. But, uh, anyway, last bit of news is that Paulo Neto, our EMLS player, he is the only one in the EMLS circuit to qualify for the FIFA E World Cup, and that's for the third consecutive year. So he is representing... Atlanta United very well uh, in the esports world. So congrats to him. Yeah, that qualification took place in London. Uh, and there was a uh, FIFA Global Series 2023 playoffs where the best 64 gamers got together. So that's fantastic. I mean, that's a lot of players. He rose to the top. Really great stuff. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, but awesome. Uh, that's pretty much the news uh, and that gets us into the match preview in which we have a very special guest. So we have a very special guest, John Zapata, also known as El Parcero Philly, joins the show. Welcome. What's going on, guys? Well, I'm happy to be back on Atlanta United Fan TV. It's Philly. It's Atlanta. We're back at it. I'm excited to talk about this. So, my brother. Indeed. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping not for a drubbing, like always, it seems like right now. It's, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, even with, you know, the uh, kind of like, it's not the the best form, I would say, but still, you guys are making your way up towards the, the conference. And, uh, yeah, fourth in the Eastern Conference, 10 wins, four draws, five losses, be enter Miami. That's easy, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for now at least, exactly. Oh yeah, no, we we talked about that earlier in this episode, but yeah, it is. Uh, man, it's LA United three, really, <laughs> in a sense. But yeah, it will be Sunday. It will be at the Benz, LA United versus Philly Union, and uh, you guys, you guys have uh, some big strengths, but some. Uh, you know, in the, the off season, some big, big uh, kind of departures. Corey Burke, uh, you know, Paxton Aronson. I mean, you know, how do you guys, uh, how do you feel about the roster at the moment? I mean, you guys are doing pretty well. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel good about it. Obviously, room for improvement for sure. Obviously, you lose Paxson, you lose Corey. They really haven't been able to find those replacements per se. That's some serious stuff you had coming off the bench there. Paxson had a creative creativity ability. Just obviously, Daniel Gazek's playing on MVP pace. Can't really get out there. And Corey Burke was just a different, you know, bull to kind of deal with. And it's, you know, it's the 60th minute. Back lines are tired. You know, he's coming at you full speed with that size. So you kind of have lost that. You know, Ernst and, the, and then the front office went out and got some MLS depth pieces. Joaquin Torres. Um, you were uh, also able to bring on this Pereira and, of course, Damian Lowe into the squad as well. Damian Lowe has been exceptional for sure. Um, Joaquin Torres started off with a bang. Had one of the best assists I've seen in a union uniform by any player. Uh, and then kind of just slowly dwindled away. He's kind of struggling to kind of find his form and, and just his fit on the squad in general and then Pereira's in the uh the infamous uh, curtain dog pound which we don't know but what that's all about but regardless right now this team is really strong obviously sitting fourth and they did not start the season off on a high note as you know very well Champions League takes up a lot of your your mindset in the early parts of the season so the union did struggle with that but now all eyes are on MLS out of US Open Cup as well cares about leagues cup, right? but in all seriousness um all eyes are on mls we are working on trying to get back to that form you saw last summer i still think that depth is still an issue with this team but i mean it's it's still the 11's pretty much still there um, we'll talk about some of the the, the key missing pieces for sunday but uh, this is still a really strong squad aj mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it is uh, something that does strike fear into my heart anyway, still. Uh, I mean, even without Zerbilko, who, yeah, you know, terrorized us, you guys didn't really love him. Obviously, you guys shipped him off to uh, Chicago, but... Uh, Dude, you guys got him paid. I hope you realize yeah, that. Man. That that match in CCL, and then he gets the golden boot. Chicago's like, yeah, we need that, and they're kind of paying for it. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, yeah, they're uh, they're dire form right now in Chicago. But uh, yeah, in, in terms of uh, Jim Curtin, I mean, you know, and I guess the expectations going into the season, uh, all the pundits pretty much had you guys first or second. N nothing lower than that and uh i mean do you feel like you guys are underperforming uh do you feel like you're probably right where you should be or you feel like there's still room to grow sure always room for growth again that early part of the season really did mess with kind of what this team this this team in the standings at the moment in the table but they are finding their ground and that's why i do feel good about it look cincinnati's playing really well and they are finding a way to keep their players, which is remarkable. Bob Brenner, I think he's he'll be here for the rest of the season, I believe. But he got Brandon sold Vasquez. off. Vasquez, you know, <laughs> any minute now, he's probably getting sold. Yep. Um, but it, it, that's going to be tough to kind of catch. And to me, I'm, I'm not per se worried about that. This team has proven in a playoff-like situation they can survive. It is funny, though, because... Uh, I, I always think back at that 2019 playoff loss, and that was so heartbreaking for me. But... The way you guys kind of beat us and the way you guys kind of were back in those days, mm -hmm. you guys were fast. You could beat teams in any different way. And this union team now is kind of built in a similar fashion where they have speed, can beat you in different ways. And it's funny how that playoff match really set up where this team is right now. And I have, have changed uh, a lot, but going forward, I mean, obviously, this team won the Eastern Conference last year, made the Eastern Conference of the year prior for a reason. So, I would feel pretty confident here. Yeah, indeed. And as well, I mean, uh, yeah, I was kind of low-key rooting for you guys in the MLS Cup, but uh, yeah, wasn't <laughs> Thanks, man. meant to be. Raw, for sure. But uh, yeah, and I'm sure, yeah, there was some uh, unfinished business in that regard. I mean, you guys have already won a shield before, so it's, you know, you have that feeling. So I'm sure it's uh, FC Sensi. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, let them have it, whatever, if they're uh, flying away with it. And there's and, and real quick there's that sense aj because you know a lot of guys contracts are up in the winter right um it feels like that window with this iteration of the union is is closing i mean ernst and jim you know you see tom bogart's reporting upon it so there is that sense of urgency like we got to get it done now if not it may never happen so that sense of urgency is definitely felt right now mm -hmm. no doubt but uh yeah you know uh in terms of uh prognosticating this match and so you know it's a it's a 4 p.m match uh 
and Atlanta just got drubbed, <laughs> like previously, and I'm not feeling great, but at the Benz, we have a better chance. We'll say this. And, uh, but in terms of unavailable players for you guys, it's not many, right? So obviously the big ones are no Blake, like obviously with gold cups, um, duties, same thing with Damian Lowe. Um, those are really the main guys that are going to be out and pretty much health wise. We have been staying in pack. Ali Bedoya has been battling injuries for the most part for most of the season. He's been back the last two matches and you can tell the form has definitely changed for this team. It's just a different animal when he's out there. Um, but overall, everyone is, is still in pack. But obviously, no Blake. That's definitely huge, and you know that, man. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, yeah, he uh, he always stands on his head against us. It's uh, against most teams in the league, yes. But... Uh, oh, no, you'll have to go with Joe Bandic, man. <laughs> yeah, which uh, we usually have more luck. We don't have Joseph Martinez to uh, embarrass him. But uh, <laughs> but still, some uh, you know second-string goalkeepers still do the business against us sometimes. And it's... Uh, yeah, that's, that, that bit is annoying. But uh, yeah, for Atlanta... Uh, mostly, it's probably going to be Eric Lopez out, Miles Robinson out on international duty, who, uh, yeah, we earlier in the episode talked about uh, him returning from his hamstring injury. So that, at the very least, uh, you know, we feel a little bit better about his health prospects. He still won't be back for a while, but uh, so, you know, that will be annoying. But uh, let's get into those predicted starting 11s. So uh, for Philly, what do you think? Yeah, so uh, for Philly this year, I know when you've seen Philly come into town or you come here, it's been the 4-4-2 diamond. That's been a staple since Ernst Tanner has arrived. Things have kind of changed a little bit this year. You've seen a lot of that three-back set. Um, they've been running a little bit of 3-4-1-2. It gives you the option of putting the best 11 players out there. Damian Lowe has truly been a top 11 player for the squad, so you've been able to put him out there. Obviously, he's not there. There's been kind of running back to diamond with it. Um, it looks stale against Orlando. It looked much better against Miami, but like you mentioned, you know, many people these days are looking really, really good against Miami. But I think in this one, again, you're just going to have to stick to that diamond. Bendik and goal. Uh, Wagner as your left back. Uh, your two center backs, Glezzit and Elliott. We'll see if Glezzit get another little, little, little rocket from out uh, from deep again. Um, we'll have, uh, I think on the right-hand side, I, I personally want Harriel out there, and baizo has been getting a little bit of the nod, uh, which is funny because he was also on the dog dog pound, but, you know, Jim was kind of steering away from a little bit since, after that CCL elimination game in LA, but um, I could see Mbaizo getting the start, but I would like Harriel to be in there considering his one-on-one -on -one defending skills. Um, and on that turf as well. But your diamond midfield, Leon at the left, El Brujo Martinez. Let's give him his give him his praise. MLS All Star here. Uh, mm -hmm. Ali Bedoya at the right. Uh, Daniel Gazak at the tip of the diamond, and then uh, Caran uh, Caranza and Ure. Two forwards up top. They're finding their form as well. And obviously, the key for this lineup is trying to slow down the top three. Gazak, Caranza, and Ure. Those guys have a serious partnership, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Caranza. He scored against us last time, I think, if I could recall. And, uh, yeah, he has been a little bit of a thorn in our side, uh, even when he was not with your side. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, definitely that's a player that I look to to uh, hopefully we can shut down. Unfortunately, we don't have Miles Robinson. So we are relying on a center back pairing that has not been... Uh, What's the word? Uh, not been reliable. I would say that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Brad Guzan uh, for me between the sticks, uh, and it's been <laughs> trouble. We have uh, been one of the, if not the, worst shot stopping team in the league. So more of that. So you guys are, yeah, you just got to take shots, really. I mean, and they likely will go in, but. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the back line will probably look like Lennon, Purata, Abram, and Gutman, and uh, Abara and Sadic for me in the uh, midfield, along with Almada, the all-star, of course. On the wings, uh, I think we're going to continue with uh, Wolf and Wiley as kind of more of the traditional wingers, and Yakumakis, who can hopefully, uh, yeah, you know, if he starts, he can score. And hopefully you guys can't shut him down because yeah, he uh, he is he is a beast. He can manhandle some defenses. 
And, uh, you know, it's a good test. It's a good test against this Philly side. So that will be very, very interesting how uh, that goes down. But uh, let's get into that score prediction then. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, there may be the perception this may be an easy one for Philly. But, I mean, you know very well traveling in this league is never easy. Atlanta, I mean, I still see you guys are putting up numbers in attendance. It's never easy to play in the bends with the crowd, with the turf. Um, so I still think it's going to be close. I think that this the Union, however, they're finding themselves. It is the, it is the summer now. Summer is when they do find themselves typically. Um, so I think that the Union will walk away with the win, but I think it's going to be one where it may take like an 85th minute goal by Leon Flock again or something like that. Um, I think a one nothing win for Philly and they walk away with three points, but I do not think it'll be easy here for Philly. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hope my uh, heart isn't broken like that. And because uh, <laughs> I'd rather it be just early. It'd be like, okay, well, this is what it is. Uh, all right, we'll just deal with it for the rest of the game if we can't score or whatever. But we are a side that scores a bunch. We also let in a lot of goals. I think there's going to be a lot of goals. I think there's going to be four goals in this match. But... Uh -huh. That'd be fun. That'd be fun, especially. Yeah. And, and by the way, I can't tell you how excited I am. We've been getting these Saturday night games. I miss afternoon football. All right, like give me my afternoon soccer again, yeah. man. But this is gonna be this is gonna be fun, especially with the Atlanta um, afternoon set. I I do like that. My my Atlanta match that I went to was a nice afternoon one. It's it's just the best time to watch soccer, man. Yeah, that, I remember that. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. Uh, I'll give the the score prediction after I I go on this diatribe. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> the afternoon. Ma okay, so I was, you know, I'm used to the Saturday nights now. I've, I have that scheduled out. Okay, you know, like I've got things going on. And now, okay, on July 4th weekend, I mean, come on. Like, it's just rude. Like, on the afternoon, on a Sunday, like, some, some people got like plans and places to go. And it's in the middle of the day. You now, like, it was a travel day, like, uh, you know. In my head, anyway, that okay, yeah, I can you know go somewhere on Sunday and uh, come back on the fifth, and it'll be fantastic. Nope, gotta <laughs> like I love Atlanta United football, but come on, just rude. Anyway, okay, diatribe oh, over. Man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's gonna be four goals, I think, for me. But it's gonna be a two-two draw. We we're just draw city, and I will take that against Philly. Uh, I don't know if it's like truly going to happen, but I think it's more of like a, a hit and hope for me that <laughs> we can pull off of that. But uh, yeah, guys, let us know in the comments below. But no, what were you about to say? No, I'll say anything can happen, man. Anything can happen. Yeah, no, it's true. So uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, guys, let us know in the comments below what you think will happen. Get your predictions in the comments. But uh, yeah, that pretty much does it. I mean, you have any last uh, thoughts on this match, and you know, anything that uh, you want to say? No, man. It's just it's always fun to 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 square off with Atlanta as always, man. You guys always like I talk about always, always, always have a great crowd. It's great atmosphere. I um, mean, you know, I was hearing the other day, obviously, a lot of talk about Messi, and you know, everyone talking about when Messi arrives in Atlanta, how crazy that would be, and. Um, I'm excited for Sunday, man. A Sunday, a little sun, Sunday afternoon showdown between the two, and mm -hmm. for the the best team, will uh, walk out with the win or points of some sort. So we'll see. Absolutely. We'll see, man. Or uh, probably, as I hope, uh, just the share of the points. So maybe <laughs> we can do that in the sport. We can do that in the sport. Exactly. Yeah, I, I will take that all day right now because we. Oh, man, it's bad. Anyway, but <laughs> John, always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, plug uh, plug where you know the good people can find you. Yeah, we are staying heavy with the union these days. We got special announcement. Obviously, we are rocking flyers here because it's the NHL draft here tonight. I don't know when people will watch, but it's NHL draft. Sorry for land. I know you guys don't have a team right now. I'm hoping you guys will, but yeah, I have special announcements coming out soon. We have a special show coming out for Philly Sports Talk. Excited to announce that's coming soon. But yeah, you need talk all the time. Find me on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter. Find me under El Parcero Philly. But it's always a pleasure. Love hopping on with the, my my boys down in Atlanta and girls down in, with Atlanta United Fan TV. So I do appreciate it as always. And we'll, we'll talk we'll talk again soon. We have another one this year. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, always lovely. And uh, yeah, man, you know, Thrasher's part deux. So 
That might happen. <laughs> Bring them back. I know. We need to. Anyway. All right, man. Always a pleasure. Appreciate you, man. Doop. That was John Zapata, a.k.a. El Parcero Philly. And uh, yes, so Michael, for you, your uh, starting 11 prediction, what do you have? All right, so I have Yakimakis as the tip of the spear. I have Wiley. I'm actually going backwards this week. That's right. You usually start with goalie, but uh -huh. we're starting with the tip of the spear today. Uh, we have Wiley on left wing. Almada is the 10 right in the center. Uh, Tyler Wolf on the right. Moving down the field, we got Ibarra pairing with Sajic. Um, so it says back and ready, but I still feel like this is our best one, and that's the one I'm going to want to see. Um, then we're looking at the uh, um, left fullback with Gutman, then Abram moving over to the right, then Parata, and then Lennon, and leaving it off with the stalwart Guzan. Indeed, indeed. I mean, not our best 11, but pretty much the exact 11 that I have, and... Yeah, you know, it's kind of the best we got at the moment. And we just have to make do against a very, very strong Philly Union side, albeit without Andre Blake. But uh, yeah, so getting into that score prediction then, what do you got? Uh, I think we lose this. <laughs> I think we lose this game. Uh, I think it's going to be like 2-0. Two, two, two to zero. I, I, Optimistically, I'd like to see a draw. But I feel like we lose this game in the the in the in the hemisphere of two to zero or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's four against six in terms of the Eastern Conference, uh, and yeah, they're a very strong side. I had uh, two two, but yeah, it is uh, it is very likely, unfortunately, with the form that we're in and that diamond that is very difficult to play against for the Union, but. All right, but uh, guys, that is pretty much the episode except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, who else do you guys think should have maybe uh, gotten a selection into the MLS All-Star game? Of course, Gigi and Almada have uh, been named, but uh, was there a snub for you in our roster? Let us know in the comments below. But that is it for us today. Uh, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe for Michael. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.